everyone, I'm Noreen Queen Alexis. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to this review slash going over of the Illuminath, or as I like to call them, the Divine Bovine, as one of my friends called them, Sterling, called them out as the Divine Bovine. And then I immediately thought of the Holy Cows. These guys, hands down, remind me of Diablo 2, the secret cow level, and I absolutely love it. So I'm going to try to make this video quick because there are people who know this game and this lore a lot better than I do who can give you a more in-depth version of it. But the Holy Cows, the newest battle tome, goes over all of the new units coming out and a ton, a ton of new lore. Like, I think I saw like uh, four or five um, different lore channels explode with all of the stuff that was in these books different reveals and revelations that I wish I knew because I don't know AOS lore too much. I've been looking to get into it. And if you guys have any suggestions on books and audiobooks to actually start reading for AOS, please let me know because I have a mountain of books left that I need to read for 40K, but I really want to learn the AOS lore. So one of the coolest things in this book is we finally get stats for one of the coolest, coolest things ever. One, this art actually makes the freaking uh, kaiju here look actually amazing. Like, dude, flat out is just a kaiju, by the way. This thing looks like it's straight out of Japan. Um, I'm not even going to lie. It looks really cool. Actually, it looks like it's out of Power Rangers because you got Rita Repulsa over here just ready to fight it. I don't know. I just like the artwork. So here, they're fighting all the Skaven and everything. See, I know a little bit about AOS. You have one of the coolest miniatures ever made, in my opinion. I really want to take one of these and turn it into a Keeper of Secrets really badly. But I'm pretty sure everyone would just know that it's a Vermin Lord. And, or whatever they're actually called. I love the new miniature for Son Goku. I think that's really cool. A lot of anime and Eastern influences in this army, which I absolutely love. Praise the sun. Um, so yeah. This model is beautiful, except for this guy. I honestly, I just don't like this guy. I, I don't know what it is. I, I would take a different guy and put him down here. You know what? He kind of looks like Aladdin. He's got a very Aladdin feel to him. Okay, so we get to actually look at some of the newer units that came out in this book, including, where are they? Where are they? Yes, the thing riding the giant ferret lizard. These things look like this straight out of Avatar, The Last Airbender. I love it. I love it to death. And again, praise the sun. Read. It says it right here. Stop being chaos. Oh, gods, do I love them. And one of the coolest things that I think they need to include in every book going forward, every battle tome going forward, every campaign book going forward is a painting guide. These are stupid levels of useful. Yes, you can watch like really good painting channels. My suggestion is always Duncan Rhodes Painting Academy because hands down, it's the best. Um, there's a lot of other like painters out there, but the second they turn on like a black light or use lighting effects, I immediately change the channel because I'm just like, no. So it shows you how to paint everything that eye is creepy. Um, let's see, it actually goes really in detail about this. Holy cow, there's a lot in here. So we got all the different types of uh, battle traits, command traits, artifacts of power, artifacts of power, command traits. <laughs> it's got tons of stuff in here. I really want to collect this army. I've been thinking about it for quite some time just because of how beautiful it looks. It's got this like high elf meets like uh, Eastern influence feel to it, in my opinion. It almost feels like kind of like samurais, like the Western depiction of samurais, not actual like samurais or anything like that. But we got all the different spells and everything in here. And then it goes through on all of the characters, very similar to every other battle tome ever, which I really think is really cool. And I love the artwork in this book. AOS at this point just has better artwork than 40K. Because I think 40K gave us the Dukari Codex and the Sister Battle Codex, which honestly look like trash. Uh, the artwork in it just looks terrible. Uh, the new artwork I'm strictly talking about just looks bad. 
But this artwork and all of these battle plans and everything, like all the scenarios and everything just look terrific. I'm absolutely loving all of this. I can't wait to actually dive into this. I do want to play Path of Glory. I've heard that that's really good. And then, there we go. We finally get the Warband table. And all of the different battle scrolls in here, which is really cool. I don't know which one I would take, though. Ooh, that's always a that's always a tough call. I do like the giant holy cow. Honestly, I thought he would be a lot bigger than he is because he's fairly small. Like for a gargantuan, like he's actually smaller than this, which is kind of surprising. Actually, let's go use the the painted version of it. Like he stands up to about here, and it's kind of sad. Like I really thought he would be pretty big. And he's just not. And I was like, well, okay. I mean, he's fine. Or they are fine. Got the ghost armor in here. Got all of the new units in here. Uh, how good are they? Move 16, six wounds, three plus save. Wow, damn, three plus save. And a nine bravery. Bunch of different weapons. Hmm. That's really good. Read that as Yanari. <laughs> it's one of their lords on the hamster. Actually, no, it's a ferret. It's a ferret horse, I would say. I think in AOS, I want to stick to my troops actually having bows and arrows and just sitting on objectives in the back. I feel like that's a pretty decent strategy. Okay. So we have a bunch of different lords and everything in here. And I, honestly, this guy's looking so good. A move of only six. I really thought he would have moved like eight. I've never seen this army prior, so please forgive my ignorance for this army. But I did almost buy this army. And I want to leave this up to you guys. Do I give these books away? And yes, I did say books. Or do I collect the army? I'm going to leave it up to you. Because I'm going to finish up my Daughters of Cain, building them soon. And by soon, I mean within the next three months. And I'm going to start getting them painted very soon, within a year. And I'm thinking about getting into this army, because I like the look of high elves. Also, I think I can magnetize their arms and have a really cool-looking Eldar army as well, by just swapping out their weapons. Hammer time. I don't care, this thing looks like an enemy out of Power Rangers. And now that I point that out, good luck on seeing it. It literally does. Like, it looks like it would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Power Ranger. I expected these guys to move 16, not 14. But still, that's really good. Ooh, there's the Sun Goku guy, right? No, that's not him. Well, he's flying on Nimbus, but still. Oh, that's so cool. 16, 5 wounds, 5 plus saves, 7 bravery. Um, Okay, so his stats aren't... Too, too impressive. Five wounds is pretty good. His abilities are really good. I love this miniature. I, I just absolutely love this guy. Like, that's Son Goku. That's, uh, that's so good. Like, I so want to just get these models just to have and paint them. That's my biggest thing. And I have a warband of them. And I'm making sure that you guys can just stop, pause, and read everything that's on here. So it should be easy for you guys. And then they got their ruins of per petrification. Wait, what? Hmm. Neat. So that's the first book. Now, again, I'm not going to go too in-depth in it. But I do want to know your opinion on this book. Do I collect this army? Start collecting this army? Or do I give this book away? It's up to you guys. And we have another book, too. Um, Broken Realms, Tentacles, because that's how I read this. I literally thought it was just tentacles. And I was like, man, GW, you're really hitting on point, aren't you? So I legit thought that this said tentacles. This book is mostly about, like, campaign games as well as uh, different uh, stat sheets and everything for the characters that are not in the other book for some reason. And it kind of annoys me quite a bit that 
you need both books to really run the army. There's a lot of lore in here because as a 40k, as a GW book, the first half of it is literally nothing but lore. And then they get into the rules themselves. And it's a campaign. Ta-da! So you can actually run through this with the Illumineth, and I believe it's uh, one of the armies of death. I think it's Nagash. Yeah, it's well, it's uh, Cities of Sigmar uh, in this picture versus uh, Spirit Host. What are their names? I cannot remember. I'm so good at this. But it does look like it's Order versus Death, which is really cool. I always love this matchup. It always feels so classic, you know, where it's not like it's good versus evil. Always a good, good versus evil battle. And there's tons and tons and tons of different fights in here. Like literally, I think every page is a different battle. Holy cow. Every page there was a different battle. That's really cool. And then the battle tome updates. So let's see where they start. Oh, they start with Nurgle. Interesting. I hate Nurgle. It's gross. Nasty. Then it goes on to Cities of Sigmar, the little death ray cart. Then we got their two uh, two battle. Uh, I can say this: the two war scrolls. God, I'm good at this. And then we have the Lumineth Realm Lords. So, do you need both these books to run this army, or do you need just one of these books to run this army? It feels so weird. Feels so good. Feels so numb, yeah. Do, 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 do. I think we saw this exact picture in the other book, and even still, it's impressive. Oh, it's just, it's so cool. Huh, that means that guy's fairly small, so I can't use him for a keeper of secrets. He's a little bit too small. I'd have to boost him up on something. And then you got the good old, uh, Son Goku fighting a Trump supporter. And, you know, just beating the ever-living piss out of him. <laughs> the ferret horse. The ferret kangaroo. Or, not the ferret kangaroo. The, um, the holy cow riding kangaroo. We actually saw this point for point in here. I'm going to point this out. Because this feels a bit lazy. This actually feels a bit lazy. See? Nothing different. That that kind of bugs me. Is it really going to be the same? Oh, that's just that's just lazy. I'm sorry. I'm going to point that out. So, do you actually need both these books now that I'm looking at this? Cuz one seems to focus more on the Illumineth and the other one is just all over the place. Yeah, even these pages are all just copy-paste from the other book. So I guess you only need one of these. This one's just the update, it feels like. Yeah, this one feels like just the update. No, it's all the troops. It's everything. So do you need both of these books? Is my question for... If you're an actual gamer, and if you guys could please answer that question for me, because it seems like the back of these books are just identical for the Illumineth. Am I missing something? Something like really important. But something cool that also came in today. This is a sealed copy of Fire Warrior. It's been sealed over again by the guys at Zia, but since you can actually see this, it's not ripped. This is a sealed copy of fire warrior for the playstation 2 i am not opening this i am stupid excited about this just wanted to show you guys that so i want to know what you guys think about these books honestly i'm impressed with this one i don't like that this one's a copy paste or vice versa um that's my biggest thing biggest takeaway from this but if you guys want to see this army and see me learn about this army like i'm doing with the daughters of cain where I have literally a ton of Daughters of Cain stuff that I'm building up, 
please let me know in the comments down below because I would actually love to get more into AOS. Although I will be selling off a 40K army in order to buy an AOS army, I'm probably going to be selling off a few 40K armies, none that you see on the channel, but they're probably going to be going. I have a bit too much stuff. And a lot of it is just going into housing funds. And I'm going to focus on my big five, which is Space Marines, Sisters of Battle, Tyranids, Gene Steeler, Cult, and Custodians. And that's about it. So tell me what you guys think about this, this stuff. I don't really know how to feel about it, but I think it's cool. And I want to know if anybody else pointed this out because it, it kind of feels like a ripoff. But not a ripoff, but like, I don't know which one you're supposed to buy and play with. Does that make sense? I feel like one's an update and one's not an update, but both of them have the same thing. So tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, personally, I'm just a bit confused and I want you guys to explain this to me. So I will be reading each and every single comment. And if you're super awesome, you'll check out all the links in the description down below. You can follow me on Patreon. It goes a long way to help supporting the channel. And I post a ton of updates on there. I try to post a video a week on there to two videos a week on there with a new series and some new fun stuff on there every week. As always, Nord Queen Alexis. I love you guys. Bye.